at a time when everyone was abandoning the club, in a time when the club was on its backside, I was almost like the sole survivor. And I think that was really what it come down to. Because to be honest with you, in the first year, they thought I was crap. And to be fair, I was crap. How do you look back on your time at Spurs? The first and the third years I was there, as in my ability to play, were the best years of my life. Um, at the end of that third year, I tore a meniscus in my knee. I ended up having four operations, I think, in about 12 months, and my career was over. I didn't realise it at the time. It was the thing that killed me. I, I was never, I was never the same after that. I worked for three great managers at Crystal Palace who managed me and they physically managed me. So Terry, Steve and Steve Bruce were phenomenal managers. Although it was very difficult in the first sort of six months, I was still recovering really. I hadn't really played football for a year. And although I was fit, I was physically fit. I wasn't game match fit. And there's a big, big difference. There's a lack of character in that team. As in, characters with cojones, as we say in Spanish. <laughs> I remember having a conversation with Terry before the Swindon game, away from home. I remember we lost 2-0. I was getting pelters and Terry pulled me before the game and said to me, he said, Dean, he said, oh, like, they're abusing you, I'm believe I've got to take you out of the firing line here. I can't, I can't let you take that amount of stick. And I said, boss, don't worry about that. Stick me out there. You need characters and I'm one of them and stick me out there. And he went, no, because actually I think that the stick that they're giving you is affecting the others. But I did feel that at that point that we had individuals. We had great individuals, but not a great team. The best individual that we did have was also the best team player, which was Attilio. There's three people I played with that I look back and I think, you know what, you'll do for me. I would have them with me all the time. One was Jurgen Klinsmann. The other one was Attilio Lombardo. And the other one, believe it or not, was Dougie Friedman. Someone said, like, you know, the, the, the gaffer's gone, he's packed his stuff up and gone, and the club's in big trouble, and, you know, there's a real chance it might go into administration, and this, that, and the other. I had a very good working relationship with Terry. He said, well, Steve's not going to play here. And I sort of said, well, I kind of know that, but. You know, I've always been one who likes a challenge. Player after player's going over the course of these two, three days before the window's closing. I had Mark on the phone to me begging me to go because he, need, he, he couldn't afford to pay me. There was something in me that was just like, I haven't shown people what I'm about here and I don't think I've had the opportunity to do that. And I don't think I could live with myself if I don't, if I haven't met the challenge head on and show people what Dean Austin is about. So I ended up staying. Steve then pulled me on the Thursday. So the squad's been absolutely decimated. And we were playing Bradford on Sunday and said to me, I want to involve you. But I'm being told by the administrators and what have you to not, to not pick you because you've got appearance money on your contract that they can't afford to pay. I won't forget it. I'll play. I don't want the money. First half an hour, 45 minutes of the game, I got absolutely pelted by the supporters. I'll never forget it. But I had a good game, considering that I hadn't played for four months. And then really, the next game was Norwich away, and, and that was it. I just remember going like with clapping the supporters and you know, I walked around and shook a few hands and fans pulling you in and saying to them how much it meant to them that you haven't abandoned the club when, when the club's in trouble and this and that. I think that was probably for me was I would say was the turning point I would say. From probably 99, 2000 to 2002, the dressing room that we had at Crystal Palace was probably as, as good as as good as a time as I've had in my life, as in being happy. As a person, it's an unbelievable experience for me. Steve just sort of said to me, 
you sort the dressing room out and you get these boys going on, on a sort of Monday to Thursday. And then on a Thursday I'll come in and then that's when I'll, I'll do my bit and what have you, but you literally run it. You're the, the leader of the team. And we just had a camaraderie. I felt it was an obligation to look after the young boys, to get them to strive to want to be better. And I thrived off it. I thrived off it. Steve knew immediately when he met Simon that it wasn't going to work. I'd been kiboshed out of it by Alan. Wasn't told that I was removed as captain or anything like that. And that really disappointed me. I just, it's not how I work. I just felt, I I just felt that anyone as a human being deserved more respect than that. The team were losing, losing, losing. When I come back, I mean, we played away at Bolton and we drew 3-3. Three, three. I played, played really well. And that was it. I had no explanation, nothing. I was back in the team. Within a month of being back in the team, I come into the dressing room for an evening game and the captain's armband was on top of my shirt. Why I got it taken away and then got it put back without even a, uh, an explanation of either or was kind of baffling to me. Ready? Just stay with me. Follow me. Come on, it's It's Rubin, so oh, what a goal! The bat ball in either Morrison. There is a feel-good factor about Crystal Palace these days. It's Murphy! Is this gonna be another one? A great movement, Fowler! And it's 5 mils of the night to Liverpool. Probably the most disappointing day of my Palace career, I'd say. I had this conversation with Simon Jordan. And we went back to the hotel and all the boys were laughing and joking and having a drink and they were going out and this, that and the other. And he said, have a drink. And I went, have a drink. I went, we've just blown, I've just seen my last chance probably of ever having the opportunity of playing a cup final, probably just, di just disappear in the first 25 minutes of a game. We've just lost 5-0. And you want me to have a drink? I went, I'm going to bed. The other day I was a winner and I still am. I might want to win in a certain style now, as a coach, but I want to win as much as what I wanted to win when I played. I play the kids at cards when I'm at home now and I have to win. I play table tennis in the garage and I have to win. If I don't, I throw the racket all over the place and whatever, it's just the way I am. That was my character. I don't think the people saw the best of me in my ability at Crystal Palace. My uh, career was, was littered by injuries and uh, there's nothing you can do about that. Broken up by Dean Austin. Our son seem already to have accepted the inevitable. This is Doogie Friedman. And he's gone right the way through! Would you believe it? It's a goal for Doogie Friedman that could mean survival for Crystal Palace. And the referee's blown the final. Elated at their victory, but still not sure that their first. It's amazing, mate. What's the, the biggest thing is people's phones. Ask the chairman if he could have the job. And the news is coming through that they have done it. They have survived. But at the McCarthy. Remember this? Yeah, I, I remember something about the stewards saying you're not going out, and I went, No, we are going, going out, mate. We are going out. You ain't stopping us going out. Palace at the end of a roller coaster season are safe. When you look back at it, I, I don't think I've ever seen that before either. None of that footage. You know, I just had a real, real bond with the fans after probably nine months. It was just kind of right. They understood me, and I now understood them. And I was playing for this, and that was what made it special.